Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this morning? And it is this morning. Oh, I just ran into my fan. <laughs> and it is this morning. Um, it is currently. I'm drinking my little cup of coffee that I made. Let's see what time it is. It is currently 10.53 a.m. And I was like trying to figure out where to put this camera. And I think I can put you like, is it gonna let sit right there? No, I'm just gonna have to hold this. Um, it is 10.53 a.m. And I just got up half an hour ago. Made a cup of coffee. I am fully rested. Um, and we are in Miami. And Miami is disaster zone right now, if you haven't heard. So, um, but it's not where we're at, thankfully. Um, but did you guys hear about this? So, I'll tell you about my day in just a second, yesterday, and why I'm vlogging today instead of last night. But, um... Yesterday I was laying down. We had like waited and waited and waited to check in. And um, so we finally got into like our room at about um, like 5.30. And so I was laying down. I told Alex, I said, I have got to lay down for a little bit. And our plan had been to like get up and go get dinner someplace like off of like Lincoln Road area. <clears throat> and... Um, because we're not starting to look until Monday um, with the agents. And so um, our plan had been to like take an Uber over to Lincoln Road. If you know Miami, it's like this long strip. And um, it's like restaurants on either side. It's really nice. And there's like lots of stores and stuff. So we were going to get up. I was going to lay down for like an hour and a half and then get up and take a shower. And um, all this stuff. And then I woke up. I like woke up and Alex was like, he was like, hey babe, he like was sitting down on the patio and he was like, um, they've declared Miami like a state of emergency. And I was like, I sat, I like shot up and I was like, what, what are you talking about? <clears throat> and he said, um, yeah, they've like shut everything down. Like you can't be out past, well, he said nine o'clock, but I, everything that I've read says eight o'clock. And so I went to go grab my phone and I had all these text messages from people. Um, like all these friends of mine, Emily Baker. <laughs> Do you guys know Emily? Um, she's a friend of mine from YouTube. And, um, and Alex's uncle. And I gotta find a way, place to put this camera. <laughs> There's no place to put it. I, I should have brought my jelly bean. I thought about that. <laughs> this is not good, but I need to drink my coffee. But anyway, um were like texting us and they were saying, this is so stupid. They were texting us and they were like, did you see that there's a state of emergency? And it was really scary because it was just like mass amounts of people. And what's so weird, you guys, is um, before we, if, if you followed my vlogs for a couple years, we used to always stay at the Victor Hotel, which is at like 13th and Ocean. It's exactly where like everything that's happening. Um, and it's just like droves and mass amounts of people. I mean, when I saw the pictures and the videos of it, I have never in my life, and I have spent a lot of time on Ocean Drive, I have never in my life spent, seen that many people. I, I've, I've never seen that many people. And, and it was kind of weird because, so when we got here yesterday, um, we have a friend of ours that owns two um places actually his is like right next door and it's the place that we stayed last time that we were here at the fountain blue two residences and um so we rent them from him but you have to like check in through the fountain blue and they've never made us wear wristbands before and they're like you have to wear a wristband and we're like what's this about and they're like well, we're just on, like, high security so that, like, if you're here at the hotel, we want to make sure that we know, like, who is staying here and who's not staying here. So, anyway, um, we, so Alex was like, you know, like, if we're going to, he goes, I'm going to go to Walgreens and just get a bunch of stuff to eat. Well, the night before, I hadn't eaten anything. <laughs> and we had gotten up at 4 o'clock in the morning. And I'll tell you about the, our day yesterday <laughs> in just a second. Um... But I was like, um, I think we should just get up and go get something to eat now. And he was like, well, don't you want to sleep? And I was like, I, I need a meal. <laughs> I was like, I need a meal. And then we can go to Walgreens and get some snacks. And then 
when we come back, I can lay down for like an hour or two and I'll wa watch the show. I started watching the show on the plane, you guys, and I'm like addicted to it. So I was like, and I can watch um, the show then. I would sit outside, but it's real windy. It's actually, the weather is, Alex is out on the beach. It's really not that nice today. I'll show you in a second. It's cloudy and um, it's like super cloudy and Yesterday, you can see I got some sun yesterday. I don't even really know how. To be honest, Alex is like, you're so red. I was like, I don't know how. We were, um, we went out, and I, I got in the pool for like a half an hour. We sat by like, it's like this private pool they have over here. And um, there was like, I couldn't believe it. There was like hardly nobody by it. And so I got in the pool, and we sat out there for like an hour, and that was before we came up here. So this is from like four to five. <laughs> How did I get burnt yesterday? I don't know. But anyway, let me drink a little bit of my coffee. I bought some of that Borello. I was talking to my friend on the phone the other day. And she was talking about how she only drinks that Borello. And I was like, oh, I used to love that stuff. So we have a little coffee maker in here, Keurig. So I bought some of that Borello. But anyway, um, so I said, oh, I think we need to go get something to eat right now. So I got up and I threw on put together a little makeshift cute outfit, you know, black shorts, black t-shirt and stuff. We got, you know, dressed and we started walking down the street and Alex was like, he looked for an Uber because we're probably like a half an hour walk from Lincoln Drive. And we were like trying to get back here as soon as possible. And, um, cause at that point we didn't really know if it was like all of, we didn't know if it was like all of Miami that they were shutting down or what they, how they were doing it. We didn't really understand. And really what it is, is it's 5th to 16th Street and Ocean Drive and that whole area. And then they're shutting off like um, the bridges coming in so people can't go in and out. Which is kind of scary when you think about it, honestly. Um, but that's after, I think, 10, 10 p.m. or 8 p.m. that they do that. So anyway, it's really like a completely different part than where we're at. And, um, so anyway, we were walking down the street and I was like, so Alex is trying to get this Uber before we left here. And he's like, this Uber to go, like, literally, that's going to be a five minute drive. It's like 40 bucks. And I was like, that is ridiculous. He's like, and oh, we stood there and he was like, they were trying to find one and they couldn't find an Uber. And so I was like, let's just walk. I said, let's just walk down there. So we started walking and then we came upon this restaurant and it was called like, Don Marie's or something. It was real cute. And I was like, let's just go in here and eat. So we went to this restaurant and ate. It really wasn't that great, but I was so hungry. Well, the salad was delicious and the bread was delicious, but I I got some pasta and it just really was not that great. And then Alex got a burger and he said it was just okay. And um, so, but it was nice. And we sat next to um, this table, these girls that were sitting there and they were like... Um, and they were, they didn't know anything about, they had just heard about it. And so we were telling them about it and they were looking it up on this restaurant. And I was joking with them. I was like, are you guys spring breakers? And they're like, do we look like we're spring breakers? And this one girl goes, how old do we look? And I said, you could be 18 or you could be 25. I, I have no idea. And she was like, we're, or I said, you could be 20, 18 or 26. And she's like, we're 25. And she's like, we're just, you know, down here. But anyway, I really didn't see anybody that, that, young when I was like walking around here yesterday so I don't know that must be a completely um they, they must be staying at other places or something but anyway we left there at like 7 30 and then we walked over to Walgreens and we got a bunch of snacks <laughs> I got like peanut m and sour cream and onion chips lays what else did I get a bunch of stuff Alex got like a, a 12, I'm looking at a 12 case of like Heineken, <laughs> peanuts. <laughs> Reminds me of like traveling with my dad back in the day. And then he got, oh, skinny popcorn. And so anyway, and then we came back to the room. Well, I went outside on the patio and called Tanya and was talking to her about it. And cause she had seen like the news footage by that point. And um, so anyway, I came in, I was literally on the phone with her for like 15 or 20 minutes. <clears throat> I came into the room and Alex is like, he had, oh, because earlier when I was laying down, he said, you know, I have told you he has the whole like bedroom all like fixed so that all you have to do is go Alexa ready for bed. And then it starts playing like the rainstorms or the ocean or whatever. 
And so he was like, earlier in the day, he was like, I just realized my husband has every one of his shoes. He has like one forward and one backwards, and he has them all. My husband unpacks when he comes into a room. Isn't that so cute? I think that's the cutest thing. I don't. I live out of a suitcase. And can I just tell you something? First of all, I bought this suitcase, and don't ever buy a suitcase from Patagonia. It's the worst suitcase in the entire world. And it doesn't look like it. I thought it was such a cool suitcase, and it carried so much. Okay, this suitcase was expensive, and that little carry-on that I got at Kohl's was super cheap. And let me just tell you, that thing is perfection. This is junk. And the whole time that I was, like, trying to carry it through the airport, it's, like, wobbling and all this kind of stuff. I couldn't get the zipper to work. The first one that I got, I had to send back. It was just, it's been a mess. I will buy from Patagonia again, and not just from that experience. I've had a couple experiences with them. I really like their stuff. I think it's cute. But I ordered a backpack not too long ago from there, and when it came, it was like completely not what I thought it would be. So I'm not gonna probably ever order from there again. But I have a little cute North Face backpack up there. It's real small. I got it for like $25 on, on uh, Amazon. I got that a couple years ago. What was I saying? Oh, but anyway, I came back in. So Alex was like, what do you miss the most about this room? And I was he was joking. And I said, oh, I miss our Amazon rainstorm. So when I came in from the room, he had like one leg off the bed. <laughs> and not because he'd been drinking with them. I mean, he hadn't drank y literally anything yesterday. He had like one leg off the bed. And he was like, the rest of him, and he had that rainstorm going on. He had fixed it. So like on our, the radio over here, it would play it. And... um the only reason I'm saying that is because it sounds like he was, like, you know, drunk, but he wasn't at all. So, anyway, he was, like, I looked at him, and he goes, I'm so tired. I go, are you going to bed? And he was, like, yeah. And I go, it's, like, 8 o'clock, right? It was, like, 8.15. He goes, I know, but I'm so tired. So, he went to sleep at, like, 8 o'clock. I went outside, and I called a couple more of my friends. And, um... Then I came in at like 9 o'clock and I was super tired, but I wanted to get up and I wanted to watch the show. So I set my alarm for 11, like 11.15, 11, I think 11.20. And I was going to get up and I was going to watch another episode or two and I was going to vlog as well. So I went to bed at like a, whenever after 9. And I woke up today when Alex was like, I'm going to go down and get chairs. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I slept like 12 hours and I don't like I was out like I didn't wake up like once in the middle I don't think I did I don't know but I slept so good so this was our day yesterday um we had to be at the airport at five o'clock so we had to leave the house at like 4 30 we're going down the street and I said I felt like I feel like I forgot something and Alex goes you always feel like you forgot something I go no but like I really do feel like I forgot something this time and he goes what did you forget and I was like I don't know and he was like do you have your wallet do you have this and I was like oh my god I forgot my fanny pack and he was like what and I had hung my fanny pack over the banister of the staircase when I was like coming downstairs and so I said it has my wallet it has my reading glasses it has everything in it so I had to go back and get that and then I was also like, I for, oh, I've forgotten contacts as well. So, um, and Alex was like, oh my God, I forgot my glasses. <laughs> I go, how do you forget your glasses? He goes, I don't know, I just didn't put them on this morning. So anyway, we were both so tired. We're never like this. I mean, like, we are like always like on time, which we are like early birds when we like travel and stuff. And so we got back on the road and we got there and when we got to the airport, it was like rather busy. Um, but they were like moving stuff quickly and whatever. So anyway, flight was fine. Um, the airport was like really, really efficient. Um, I was kind of surprised how efficient, honestly, it was. Um, I felt completely safe, you know, as far as how they handled the whole situation. And um, so it, was, it wasn't bad. I, I felt good about it. And then we got down here, and we um, got our bags and stuff, and then we Ubered over to um, the hotel. We got here, you guys, at like... So we usually, when we come to Miami, so Brickell is the area that we would like to live in, and, well, there's a couple different places. There's also an area of, um, oh, there's also an area of Miami that is... 
it's like the Western area that has like a high, um, there's a lot of Venezuelan people over there. That's one area that we really like too. Um, there's a lot of different areas that we want to look. There's areas that are kind of like further outside of Miami, like Coral Gables, but it's kind of expensive. Um, so we'd like to look at just like what's realistic in there. But anyway, around the Brickell area, there's this restaurant called Doji's and it's a Venezuelan restaurant. And so usually when we fly in, we take an Uber straight to Doji's and then we just take our bags and everything in there. We just like eat, you know, it's this little small restaurant, but it's like authentic Venezuelan food. And like Alex loves it. Cause when he goes there, he gets stuff that like he, like his mom and grandma and Liliana and stuff like they don't typically make because it's like really like um, I'm trying to give an example of what it would be it would be like if you went to like um, like a cafeteria like MCL cafeteria like in Indianapolis and you got like you know fried chicken mashed potatoes green beans you know the whole deal that like maybe your mom wouldn't cook on a regular basis like she'd make it for you but she wouldn't cook it for you on a regular basis or your grandma right apple pie and all kind of stuff all in mode so he can get like the real deal there you know in a way that he hasn't had for a long time so he loves it, and um, and they have these uh, cheese empanada cheese. Yeah, they're just like three cheese empanadas there that are fantastic. So we usually go there, but he was like, I don't want to carry the bags and stuff this time. He was like, so let's just do it some other day. He was like, when we're down in that area looking at stuff anyway. And I was like, that's fine. So we came to the hotel, and I knew that they weren't going to be ready because the last time that we were here, they weren't ready either, which is whatever. I mean, I expected it kind of, but it's so weird how they do the whole thing. So. Our friend owns the places, and um, the reason that we can't use um, the other one is because he's here the same time that we're here. So anyway, um, and this is like, it's real weird how you walk in here. It's like you walk in the door, and then there's two doors. So like the main door is like private, and then you walk in here, and then like his is like the bigger one, and ours is like the smaller one. But they're still really nice. Um, <clears throat> so, what was I going to say? Okay, so they're considered like Airbnbs, so like we pay him like directly, but then we have to check in through the hotel, and the cleaning is done through the hotel and all that kind of stuff. Um, although they like don't come and clean like while we're here, because it's considered Airbnb. So, um... Anyway, it wasn't re like it wasn't ready when we got here, and they were like, "Well, we'll text you when it's ready." So Alex and I, um, and it was like not like let's go to the beach kind of weather. It was like sixty five when we first got here. Um, so I was like, I really would like some Starbucks. So we changed our shoes and into shorts and stuff, and then we walked down to Starbucks. Well, actually, we walked the wrong direction. And there's like a bunch of boats. If you've ever been from the Fountain Blue, on the other side, it's like um, for probably like five miles, there's just like boats that are like, um, it's not a marina necessarily, but it's kind of, there's just like boat, 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 boat. And then on the other side are these really nice houses with boats and stuff. And I love boats because I grew up on boats, you know? I was actually telling Alex that this one book that I was going to write, one of the characters was going to live on a boat. So anyway, but like a smaller boat in, in Miami. Um, so I said, I just want to walk along and look at the boats for a second. It was really fun. And so we walked, we walked for long, dreamed about having a boat and stuff. And, um, but anyway, then we realized we were going the wrong way. So we went down the other way, um, to Starbucks and it was like, the streets were dead. It was inter interesting. It was like, there was like nobody out on the roads. Um, this would be, if you know Miami, it would be like, I don't know what that road is. It'd be like 43rd like 43rd and I think Collins maybe. And then we went down 43rd all the way to the Starbucks, which I don't know where that Starbucks would be. So anyway, you had to go over like two bridges and um, it was very like, uh, it was just a really interesting walk because it just was like, like a part of Miami that we hadn't seen before. So when we got to this Miami, or we got to the Starbucks, went in and ordered our drinks. <clears throat> I am so in love with that brown sugar oat milk drink, you guys, that um, one of the things that totally sucks about right here is that the coffee shop that's in the Fountain Blue, there's always a line that's probably two miles long, and there's no Starbucks anywhere near here. So here's my coffee for the day. I won't be having an iced coffee that I can carry around with me. Um, and we're not staying here. 
the whole time either we're switching places like towards the end of the week um so anyway um what was i gonna say so we went to starbucks and we were sitting outside and there was like this guy and this girl i thought they were a couple at first but they weren't a couple and um so they were sitting at the other table and there was this girl behind us and she had like her airpods on and she was talking and she was real loud and she was like well i told her i don't understand why she's dating him anymore and blah 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 blah, blah. and it was so funny and so like every time like she would get real loud like um this guy and this man and woman like would look over at like alex and i and start laughing right and the guy would say stuff he was real snarky and um he'd be like well he, he'd say something like well now we know or something like that it was real funny and um so anyway, we started talking to them, and they were hilarious, and they were from Idaho, and we had such a good time talking to them, and they had never been to Miami before, so they were telling us about, like, you know, and they were staying, like, at the hotel, like, right next to us, and they were, like, telling us, like, you know, like, what they had done while they were down here and all that kind of stuff, and that they were, like, really having a good time in Miami, but anyway, and they were down here for her daughter's birthday, and her daughter, she was telling us that her daughter was, like, a nurse, and, um, but anyway... So we sat there, talked to them for like an hour. Then we walked back. And then um, Alex had some work to do. So we sat in like the main, like when you walk in, there's like this huge like bar, this round bar. So we sat in the corner and um, he worked on some stuff on the computer and on a Diet Coke. And I just kind of like laid there and looked at stuff on my phone. <laughs> and then... Um, Finally, it was like, we still hadn't heard, they hadn't texted us that the room was ready. So, um, they can keep your bags like in this big room so you can go in and out of there and get stuff out if you need to. So finally, Alex was like, well, do you want to go to the pool for just a little bit or whatever? And I was like, yeah, sure, I guess. I was like, I mean, it's check-in time. <laughs> they should have, our room should be ready. But, um, so we went down and I was like, I've got to get in the pool. I didn't realize how much I missed the pool. It's so therapeutic for me. And I just sat in there and just like closed my eyes. It was so nice. And then I listened to some of my audio book. And then we came up and we came into our, got into our room. Um, yesterday on the plane. So I rented two movies. <laughs> on I, iTunes or Amazon or something. I rented um, uh, the summer of 84. Well, no, the first movie I rented was... Something, somebody and somebody go to Del Mar. It looks really funny. It's by the people it's that produced Bridesmaids. And then the other movie I rented was Summer of 84, which was this horror movie. Didn't even realize it and got on the plane and was like, oh, you didn't download either one of them. I rented them, but I didn't download them. <laughs> so I was like, damn it. Um, but I had downloaded a bunch of shows. So I started watching The Undoing on HBO Max. I watched two episodes of it. Can we talk about this show for a second? Why did nobody tell me to watch this show before? Okay, this is the most weirdest out there show. I mean, like, and I don't like Nicole Kidman. I have to, just have to tell you. I don't know what it is. But, like, in personal interviews and stuff with her, I really never like her as a person. But on this show, um, like, she is just, oh, she's so good. The show is so, so incredible. And I love that actress that's in it that was on um, American Horror Story. You guys, I just finished the second episode. Don't tell me anything about what happens. But it is so, so, so good. It is so good. I'm, like, blown away by how good it is. So, anyway. Um, I kept on, like, Alex was, like, working on the plane. And I was like, baby, you've got to watch this show, The Undoing. And he was like, okay. He was like, oh, when we get there, I'll start. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So today, our plans are to, well, like I said, he's out there. It's real cloudy right now, so I don't plan on, I don't have any plans to, like, go out there anytime soon. I mean, I may with him, but I was looking. There's really, like, not anybody out there right now. I'll show you. It's real cloudy. Can you even see it? It's like nobody in the pool. 
the beach is dead. Can't see it, but this is like our little private pool thing over here. <clears throat> Yesterday, I swam in that pool, and then there's a kiddie pool around there that I swam in. Oh, here you can see. Here's where all the boats are, and they go way down this way as well. So yeah. And I'll give you guys a little like room tour when our room's a little bit more cleaned up. And all of our stuff isn't sitting everywhere. Um, it's nice, it's, a, it, it's decorated exactly like uh, the other one was decorated and it's a junior suite. Um, so we've got like a little kitchenette area, which is nice. Um, and then like a little coffee thing and there's like a little sitting area over there, the bathroom is big. So it's nice, I like it. It's just enough for what we need. And then I think tonight we're going to dinner with him. But Alex and I just were like, um, like we talked about it last night. And I said, it's, it's sad because we had planned at some point to like walk over to the Ocean Drive area, but I don't think we're gonna do that now, you know? Um, which is fine. I mean, there's other areas of Miami that we're gonna go to, but we were just gonna, you know, go over there for dinner one night. Um, but I said, well, this will be good. I said, we can, you know, get some good sleep and, you know, watch Netflix shows in the room and go to bed early. And we can just, like, when we're done, like, you know, with, um, like, either laying by the pool or being out, you know, looking at stuff, um, property, then we can just go to dinner, like, right away and then come back. And then, I mean, I'm good for a nap at 8 p.m., you know what I mean? So, it's not that big of a deal for me. But anyway, I hope everybody's safe. Um... You know, I got it, on the heels of um, talking about like the safety issues on Ocean Drive. That's the thing that's scariest to me is like, I saw that, <clears throat> I was watching some of it because friends of mine were sending me a lot and I didn't really understand a lot of what I was seeing, honestly. Um, sometimes I don't talk about everything that happens on this channel because I don't really know how, like sometimes when I don't know enough about it or I don't know, um, how to say it in I think sometimes because I try to be a, per a person that is motivating of other people or inspirational of other people or um, I don't know like I, I just I think I think sometimes in my head I try to be you know, that and trying to be inspiring and whatever. And so sometimes I, I don't know what to say. And it was like recently I got several comments about, are you going to address the situation that happened with the, um, the shooting of the Asian women? And I didn't really know what to say in that situation except for that. I mean, you know, I like, I posted on my Instagram, you know, a thing that said stop Asian hate. I feel like, that goes without saying. I feel like we live in a world where just this, this, I don't know, just this total, I feel like we live in a world where in the last like two to three years, racism, misogyny, you know, homophobia, transphobia, um, it just is like on a level that honestly, like, and, and maybe it's because, maybe it's because media-wise, more attention is being drawn to it, which I think is important, because then we're having the discussions we need to have. And I, and I think it's important to note that I was never anybody that was ignorant about this stuff. So if it was like, if it was in the news and it was happening, I saw it, I knew about it. We are seeing it on a level, and I, I think, like with the violent acts like that, um, you know, I ask myself, and this is the scary reality of it, I ask myself, if, if that had happened with, you know, in Atlanta five years ago, would it have even made national news? Like that's the scary question. So 
the reality is maybe it's important that people are discussing it on you know a national level but it's extremely sad to me and if you don't know what i'm talking about please look up the article it stopped um if you don't know what i'm talking about please you know google the articles of the six asian women that were killed and look into it and find out what's going on it's important for us to be educated it's important for us to use our voices to um you know, it's, and I think that goes from everything from using mimicking voices to making racist jokes. I think people don't understand that sometimes. It's like, um, and this is, uh, if somebody tells a joke, okay, and let's just say if you're somebody's telling a joke that is making fun of somebody of Asian descent, right? and you laugh at that joke or you don't say anything against that joke then you're part of the problem as well and i think that we are living in a world where, where we can't just continue to be part of the problem like it's not enough to not say anything it's not enough to, you know and and i think like this is important even though my situation is completely different and i and i don't equate it to that whatsoever but when i look back at the people in high school that bullied me and let's say the five or six people that were their friends that sat around them that never said anything, right? Like they never were the ones using the words or pushing me into lockers or damaging my property or anything like that, anything like that. But they just stood there. They were part of it. Well, they were complicit as well. And I was just as afraid of them as I was of the people that were doing it to me. So when we stand by and we don't say anything, okay? then yes, we are part of that. And that's actually the comment that I got on my vlog, which I want to say thank you for. Um, I don't remember who said it, but she said, when we don't say anything, we're saying a lot. Um, and so I wanted to, you know, make sure that I talked about it on this channel because I think it's important and we have to talk about it. Um, so please go educate yourself. Look up. I will... Um, I actually have a link. I found it on my... Go to my Instagram story. I will, I'll link it up later this afternoon of ways that you can help and resources um, for what's going on right now with all of that. I will link it on my Instagram story and I will um, post it up there later this afternoon. And if you're watching this vlog and you're like, Peter, you didn't do that, um, comment on my vlog and I will make sure that I do that because I actually screenshot where I wanted to do that, but I wanted to mention it in the vlog before I talked about it, so... Yeah, I don't under, you know, it's just, it's sad. I don't understand this, like, hatred and this, and then you want, you ask yourself, where does it come from? You know, where does hatred for another human being come for, from because they're black or because they're, you know, Asian or because they're a woman or because they're gay or because they're trans? And, and I really, to be honest with you, like, on a really gut level, that's going to make me sound really probably very ignorant and stupid. What I don't understand it is, like, like, if it doesn't affect you, why the F do you care? Like, if, if, you, if you don't associate with people that are different than you, and you're not going to be living with those people, okay, then leave them alone. Like, I've never understood it, right? And then, to take that immense hate to a level where you would violently attack or kill somebody, like... I really, I don't understand it. I, I really, and I and I really never ha have understood it, you know? And I remember my mom back in the day, she used to say to me, you know, like, I think that people that don't understand it is because they don't have that, they can't have, they don't have that capacity for hate in their hearts. And I hope that that's true, you know? I hope that that is. Um, there's actually a really good, uh, I, was my, I was talking to my friend yesterday about um, the Maya Angelou and Oprah, um, what do you call it? Um, the Maya Angelou and Oprah clips on YouTube. And there's some fantastic ones. The one is um, my favorite. It's the first one. If you look up Oprah, and I know because I just did it yesterday. If you look up Oprah, Maya Angelou, the first one is um, people... If, people know themselves better than you do and they show you who like when people show you who they are believe them they know themselves better than you do and then the clip that's also on there is when you know better you do better and oprah talks a lot about when she was in her 20s she made a lot of mistakes when she was in her 30s she made a lot of mistakes but as you grow and when you know better you do better and i'm such a believer in that like you know i'm not a perfect human being i'm going to continue to make mistakes but i hope that i'll continue to grow through that as well 
But then there's one on there and I had forgotten about it, you guys, and it's Maya Angelou responding to how she felt about the 9-11 thing. You guys, you have to watch it. It, ma it, it makes you look at situations in a completely different way, in a capacity for love and understanding that as a human being, you probably didn't realize you had until you watched that. And then you're like, oh wow, I, I see things the way that she sees. I, I can see it, how she sees it, you know? Um, and it's really a way for us to kind of understand the world in a better way. But it makes me sad. And, you know, that being said, I hope, I hope people down here are safe. And I mean, do you think the day will ever come where we don't wake up to some horrific, um, you know, article in the news about something horrible that happens? It just breaks my heart. It makes me so sad. So... Let's send some love and some compassion to each other out there. Is my phone, I was gonna say if my phone was right here, I was gonna read a couple comments. Oh, somebody said that they're reading Black Coral with me. I started it and I listened to some of it yesterday. Um, like I said, when we were at the pool and it's good. It's exa it reminds me exactly of the first one, and so I love it. And I love when you get a writer that doesn't like, once like, if they're writing a series, like, like if I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm excited about that. And then I'm excited to watch... I want to keep on calling that show Unhinged. Glamour shots. Um, the Undoing. So anyway, I'm going to get off here now, and uh, I'm going to go figure out... What, it's still so cloudy. I don't want to go down there when it's cloudy. That's not fun. <laughs> I'd rather sit up here and listen to audiobooks or talk on the phone or something. So. Anyway, and thank you guys so much for all of you that were like, hope you guys find exactly what you're wanting. And, um, and so we're, what we're doing is... We're like throughout the week, um, and not for long periods of time, but throughout the week, you know, a couple days, we're going to look at an area. They're showing us like that area and what's kind of in there. And then like price range, this is what this will look like. And in some instances, like a specific property. Um, but not like one that we're really looking at, but just like this is what you would get if you were in this area. Because some areas, you know, like you can walk down the street and some buildings, it goes building to building. So um, there was an area that um, when I came down here, I looked at that area that I was staying in and I there was a couple buildings in there. So that's kind of an area that I really, really liked as well. Um, and it was, it seemed very safe. And it was also a place that you could have a car and like drive in, you know, around and, you know, kind of like go into the suburbs and stuff, which I want. Like that's important to me because you guys know I love my drives. So anyway, um, that will be starting here soon. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. So I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.